Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So today, let's try to understand what is direct delivery in purchase order and sales order process. So first, let's try to understand the concept of direct delivery. So when I say direct delivery, so let me put here, let's say I get an order from the customer that I want to purchase a particular quantity of goods. So now, when I want to sell this to customer, let's say I'm the legal entity here. So I don't have that particular product available with me. So now I want to purchase that from the vendor. So let's say I want to purchase from the vendor. So here, if you observe, whenever my customer comes up with a specific requirement, the exact quantity I'm going to purchase from the vendor. So therefore, I will tell my vendor to directly sell or directly deliver the goods to customer location. So here if you observe, I'm purchasing from vendor. Therefore, this is a purchase order exists between company and vendor. I'm selling to customer. So this is sales order that exists between direct, I mean my legal entity and my customer. So the only thing happening is the goods is directly going from vendor location to customer location. So from accounting perspective, I have to record purchase order accounting entries, I have to record sales order accounting entries as well. So let's see how this is done in D365. So let's come to D365. Now, when I'm doing this direct delivery, there is no setup required. There's a setup which is already pre-built in D365. So in this case, first, I'm going to get an order from the customer. So I'm going to create a sales order. And after creating a sales order, we convert that to purchase order. So let me go to modules, accounts, receivable, orders, all sales order. So this is to create a sales order. So click new to create a new sales order. Select the customer account. I'll quickly select the customer account and click OK. So once I come to my sales order, uh, let me fill all the details. Let's say my customer want to purchase an iPhone. Uh, I'm just randomly picking that. So uh, update the quantity. Let's say there is around uh, 15 quantity. Then I can update my unit price as well. This would be my selling price. Let's say I want to sell for 2000. So I'm going to fill all my sales order details. Uh, let me update the site and warehouse as well. So I'm just randomly picking this warehouse. Remember, there is no quantity available in this particular warehouse. So I'll fill all the details, click save, and then I'll confirm my sales order. So once I confirm the sales order, so at this stage, I know that the product doesn't exist in my warehouse. And so far, there is no accounting entry being posted in the system as well. So once I confirm the sales order, I'll come to sales order tab here, and I'll click on direct delivery. Now, there is a purchase order tab. Now this is used for a different functionality. So make sure you select direct delivery and not purchase order. So click on direct delivery. So once I click on direct delivery, here if you observe the item and the quantity is automatically picked from my sales order lines. So now I can select the vendor from whom I want to purchase. Let's say I'll select Apple. Then I'll include this vendor then I can select the unit price as well. So my purchase price and my selling price will obviously be different. So that's the reason I have an option to update the unit price. As I'm purchasing at 1500. So fill all the details and click OK. So once the operation is completed, so here you can see my purchase order has been created. So purchase order number. You can also verify if you come to line details so here you can see reference number. So my reference type is purchase order. Reference number is my purchase order number, which is 12. So now at this stage, I have created a purchase order. I have created a sales order. Now from accounting perspective, so if I want to deliver a quantities to customer, first I want to purchase because without purchasing the quantity, I will not be able to sell. So first thing after creating a purchase order, make sure you post product receipt because I want to receive this product. Now, when I post this product receipt, since it is directly being delivered from vendor location to customer location, 
I will not be having this stock in my warehouse, right? So as soon as I post my product reset, my inventory will get increased. Inventory, okay, so it will get increased, that is plus in my warehouse. Immediately there has to be a negative entry. So let's say increase, okay. Then there has to be decrease as well because I am not physically receiving this particular quantity in my warehouse. So once you post product reset, my inventory is increased. But what system does is in the sales order, packing slip is automatically posted. Okay, so this entry is auto. So why it is automatically posting? Because my goods is going from vendor to customer. But from accounting perspective, I should still show as purchase order and sales order. So that's the reason when you push product receipt, product receipt accounting entry is posted where my inventory is increased. Simultaneously, automatically, system will post a packing slip and that particular goods or the same quantity will be decreased from my warehouse. So this two entry happens simultaneously. So let's go for purchase order and post product receipt. So go to system. So let me go to purchase order. So let's go to purchase order, accounts payable, orders, all purchase order. So I can verify uh, my purchase order number here in the reference. It is 12. So let's come to purchase order. I can see purchase order number 12 automatically created. And you can see the status. It is open order. So click on purchase order. So once I click on purchase order, <coughs> so here I can verify the lines, product name, quantity, and even the unit price, which I manually entered is already here. You can see your site and warehouse will also be automatically updated. And also you can see the reference here. So my reference number is my uh, sales order reference type and reference number is 13. So this is the sales order number 13 for which I have created this purchase order. So there's a connection between purchase order and sales order, okay? So now that I have come to uh, purchase order, so let's confirm purchase order and then post the product receipt. So I'm confirming. So once the purchase order is confirmed, now let's post the product receipt. So go to receive, under generate, click product receipt. Okay. So fill your uh, product receipt number, then you can even verify the line details, the quantity and the unit price, click OK. So this will generate the product receipt and here is where first accounting entry comes into picture. So once the product receipt is created, to view the accounting entry, click on product receipt. Okay. So click on vouchers or where you can see your accounting entry. So once I go inside the vouchers, so here you can see my product receipt accounting entry is posted. Okay. So this, I mean, I've made a separate video where I've explained what accounting entries will be posted at what stage. You can use that video as a reference. So once my product receipt is posted, so as I explained here, at this stage, this auto packing slip is automatically posted as well. So let's go back to my sales order. So initially it was open delivery. Now I posted my uh, product receipt. So just refresh this. So once I refresh, you can see the status changed to delivered. So we didn't do any step here, but system automatically posted or changed the status to delivered. So if I go to pick and pack in the packing slip, you can see my packing slip is already posted. So here you can verify my packing slip is already posted. So I can also uh, show how my inventory looks. So let's say I'll go for inventory. Uh, so to go to inventory, so you go to product information management, then you go to products, released products. So I'm just showing the impact of product receipt and sales order uh, packing slip basically. So go to transactions. So here you can verify there's a plus 15 quantity which I received from my purchase order and there's a minus 15 quantity which we sold or delivered from my sales order. So this is how you record your direct delivery. So at this stage invoice can be posted for purchase order first and then sales order 
or I can issue my invoice to customer and then later I can post my invoice from purchase order because invoice is independent. So let's say, let's complete the process. So let's go to purchase order and let's say I will receive my invoice from the vendor. So let me post the invoice. So click on invoice, under generate click invoice. Okay, so let me fill uh, so the uh, invoice details from the vendor. So I've already made a separate video on explaining how an invoice, what is three-way match, how do you update this match status, uh, and what is the accounting entry posted during purchase order is already done. So now let me click post. So this will post the purchase invoice. Okay. So operation completed, my invoice is posted. So once I post the purchase invoice, now I can go to sales order and I can issue invoice to my customers. So go to invoice and generate invoice. So this will generate invoice for my customers. So let's say I will verify all the details and then click OK. So let's say click OK. So this will generate invoice for my customers. So now customer invoice is posted. So remember at the invoice stage, you can first generate invoice for customers and then post purchase invoice or you can first post purchase order invoice and then can post customer invoice. But when it comes to product receipt, first it should always be product receipt from purchase order and my, in, I mean, packing slip is automatically posted by system. So that's it for today's video. Thanks everyone.